or Ark Horton? All right, like which one do I say here? Because I I don't I don't want to I don't want you to beat me. You look tough, and I just don't really want to. I don't want to deal with the repercussions of you just giving me like a headlock of doom. Because I think it would be a very painful headlock of doom. I I don't want one. Yeah, I um I have to digest the fact that you said I look tough for a moment. Okay, do, um, do, 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 all right, we'll do that. Uh, you can call me either one, whatever feels better. It's a pen name, so I'm not emotionally attached to it, really. Uh, okay, because I, I, I don't want you just raging. You called me Ark. <laughs> what, am I a seal? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I'm fine. Hey, listen, listen, we're writers. They're, we all have, like, inner supervillains. I, I truly know this because we all, like, when we get right, get right down, we are we are we are basically taking our imagination and we're telling a story with it and we're making character tell characters what to do and they do it regardless of how like maybe not perfectly because let's be honest we don't always know what we're doing but they do it so I mean there's a touch of megalomania in what we do there 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 has to be so there here go do we all have like inner supervillains somewhere in us it's possible my favorite chapters to write were my villain chapters so fun like like they are always fun to write because let's be honest with a villain you don't have to play by the rules villains do have two very simple rules and to be good right and none of them have to do with how twirly their mustache is that's just a bonus right the first the first it the first and, and probably the most important on some level the villain has to be right it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be a perfect filter of the world in fact it can be out there his vote like his 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 perspectives can be totally out there but on one fundamental level there's a point to what he's doing or she's doing that's one two is credibility whatever they say or do they have to follow through if they do not then they're not much of a super villain they're just they're just there and you don't take a villain like with, with no credibility there's no way to take a villain seriously so yeah. credibility and a little bit of justification, and you can make anybody a villain. I think what I like about writing villains is really you can do whatever you want mm -hmm. with a villain. If you, when you're writing the protagonist, every time that protagonist makes a decision that is not, um, you know, altruistic, the reader gets a little bit incensed. And I, you know, I've had people contact me to say, I can't believe that I. Uh, did that that was such a horrible thing to do I'm like she's a 19 year old girl and there was a hot guy and she was feeling insecure she did it that's what normal people would do and uh, but but when I write a villain every time he does something that's even remotely you know nice or relatable people are like wow I think I might actually kind of like that villain a little bit. In fact, in my last book, my editor said she got a crush on him. I'm like, you Aww. hated him in the last book. <laughs> How come you can't get over the fact that I have flirted with somebody that she shouldn't have been flirting with, but this guy who killed all these people because he liked feminists, <laughs> he's a good guy now and you have a crush. What? Because, because, because as a species, human beings are insane. First and foremost, that's just, that's just an absolute truth. This time has taught, like, has reinforced this fact to the nth degree. We're all crazy. That that's just the way it is, right? Yeah. All right, number one and number. So number two, it's like, like on some level, like good villains. I mean, I mean, we can talk about like we can talk about other things too. But I mean, you can a villain can say and do anything they want, and that's awesome. It's free. It's very fun. Yeah, it's very fun, right? <laughs> but but again, as long as they're credible. In terms of what their goals are, what they want, and they can do it, and they're right on some level. They're actually fundamentally right. Even the Joker in the Dark Knight. One thing he absolutely said that absolutely was right. He goes, "Listen, I threaten to kill one little old mayor, and everybody loses their minds. If I say I kill a gangbanger or a bunch of cops, like it's part of the plan. It's horrifying." And he's right. That's a horrifying like mm -hmm. like perspective we have as as a culture. That's 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 there, that's a disconnect that I still can't get over. But he's right. It's absolutely true. You're not right. He, it's absolutely he, true. He, that is the one thing he said. He understood. Like this makes sense. Like if I said I was gonna do this and this, you wouldn't care. I just would be a run of the mill. What? If I went after one guy, just really just one guy. When you sit there and think about it, just a dude. 
and you all lost your shit because I upset the established order. And that's all I had to do. And then look at that, and you've lost your mind. I think, the, uh, which I think, which, which, again, you can, there, there's a little bit, it's a little bit more sophisticated than that. Joker yeah. uses a very complicated form of game theory in a lot of the things, what, when a lot of decisions he made, or he used a lot of different game theories. But the truth of the matter is, like, on one very real level, he's right. And that made that's what made him gave him a little bit of agency it doesn't justify everything he did by any yeah. stretch of the imagination but what it does do is you have a reason you have an understanding of what he wants which is very important because now you have a way to connect to that character mm -hmm. even if like who he is doesn't in the in the joker joker's a unique case he's more of a force in nature than he is a person mm -hmm. but even so it's not important to know who he is is what was important what's important to a villain like that is you know what he wants because once you have good that gives that gives you a sense of how he conflicts with batman he's all about order right it's a good analogy right right and that's why he works as a villain for batman but he wouldn't necessarily work as a villain for say me it's um it's i'm out of my way club, right now, villain for me. Now, villain for me would probably be like a six-year-old kid that just kicks my shins because that that that's about the level I can handle things at this point. <laughs> but I mean, but I mean, that's that that's that's and I and I say as well with a little bit self-deprecation. But that's that's the thing. Right? Villains can say or do anything. They can have any goal they want, mm -hmm. but you have to, on some level, connect with them. By understanding where they came from, who they are, or what they want. You don't even have to answer all three of those questions. In fact, maybe it's better you don't, right? But you but you at least have to give that sense to the reader. Because if you do not, you're not going to care. I don't care that he's blowing shit up. Well, I mean, I might get more of like, okay, this is cool. Now what? But if you don't have anything to now what, the villain, the, the villain loses his time. It's a little more than that, I think, because it, it, for similar reasons, when you write a death, any death in a book, it doesn't have the same impact unless you follow these rules, which is they have to see that person as a person, and they have to relate to that person. They have to have some reason to care. When it's a group of people, it's harder to care because you don't know them. It's... it's uh, anonymous almost when you have enough people uh when it's somebody that is just one person if it's somebody's grandpa that is somebody's grandpa now all of a sudden you're thinking about his grandchildren you're thinking about his history you're thinking about what kind of person he is and then that matters i read this advice once and it was so good oh gosh it said right before you write something really really violent you should write something very peaceful and eloquent so that the reader can feel how violent that is. So the reader mm -hmm. experiences that violence for themselves. Yeah, because, because you're trying, again, you're playing with people's imaginations and you're trying to stimulate them. But let's, let's be honest, we're trying to hallucinate, you know, a little, make people hallucinate. But that's what we do. I mean, it's their thing about it. It's true. By the way, hey, Doris, how you doing? Um, Doris, this is this is a, I'm going to say ARK because again, okay. no headlock, no headlock of doom, and right, but um, and I, but but the thing is, right, with with a uh, with with a character death, you make people feel many different things with the death depending on the person it is. Like if the person's a bastard, you kind of hope he dies. I hope that about gets his comeuppance, right? Yeah. Um, sometimes, like. Now, sometimes you don't necessarily want them to die, but you do want them to kind of suffer a fitting fate. I think of something like uh, I'm a Wheel of Time guy person. One of my favorite uh, uh, characters, I can't remember her actual name, but she, her name is Spider. She was she was Nina Eve's like, villain from The Forsaken. Her fate at the end was perfect for her because it was just like everything was set up. Like she kind of went there before, she never learned, never changed, never evolved. And so she ended up right back where, back in that position again. But in a worse way and then when she ended up with before which i thought was such an interesting such an interesting perspective on like the fate of the character um but when you want to do like a violent scene there's a lot of things you can do with one 
-hmm. for example. Yeah, a nice peaceful thing. Making someone laugh is is also a really powerful thing. Um, one of my favorite examples, I'm a Dark Tower guy. I love the Dark Tower. Mm -hmm. um, then the last book, they have a battle and they win the battle. And then there's a moment where Stephen King himself is actually, he's the narrator in the story, and you can tell he's the narrator. He goes, I want you to get the look at this moment, because they're really happy. There's, there's a really happy moment of victory, and he does it. It's beautifully well done. And then right before things really go to shit, he goes, I want you to remember, and he goes to the readers, I want you to remember this image. These guys are happy, they're family, and love, because from here on in, right, things break, they break. And the next 100 pages are one of the most, it's one of the most brutal things I've ever read. Because when the first one happens, okay, you expected that. Mm -hmm. Then another one happens. And the other one is cruel. Like, um, not, it wasn't that it happened. It was so cruel that it was like, I can't believe this. Yeah. And it just breaks you. But he sets you up. He told you what he was going to do. And then he did it. And he still broke you in the process, which is a masterful job. This is what's going to happen. Enjoy this moment. I let you guys have this because when I break this up, when I get to the end of the story, this is not going to be there. Yeah. Enjoy this image. I wanted this here because they were deserved this. Because what happens next? Bang. And it was a bang. Like it just like it was like that. And it was like, oh man. Right. So. Yeah. No, I, I agree with you on that. Um You read that book too? I read some of it. I haven't finished it yet. Uh but it's it's one of my it's my favorite series. Like honestly yeah. also it's my favorite series. I love it's really good. Yeah. yeah, it's really good. Um, but yeah, I, I I don't know. I I kind of go between it. I really enjoy dark fantasy myself personally. Mm -hmm. But when I'm writing, I just can't take myself seriously enough to keep it up long term. So oh. <laughs> I wind up just like. Okay, so I'm just going to say this is dark humor fantasy because I'm going to throw some gallows humor into this. I'm going to, you know, I because I think uh, in my life personally, every time I have had, you know, a dark moment in my life, it's always been woven into something comical. And that's just how I deal with it personally. So that's a healthy way to deal with things. So to be perfectly yeah. honest with you, look, look, I mean, fear, laughter from fear. Laughter makes fear small. It does. It, it's one of the best. If you can find the humor, mm -hmm. if you find a way to laugh in the face of absolute fear and terror, you will move, you will survive, you will not break. It's true, actually. Um, when I get really, really scared, you know, like jump scare scared, I laugh. Mm -hmm. um, I I live in Florida, and on Halloween, I often go to Halloween Horror Nights in Universal Studios, and I would go through all those haunted houses, and every time somebody would come at me, I would just be like, ah! <laughs> People really thought I was having a great time. I was like, no, I'm terrified. This is just my instinct. <laughs> no, no, but it's a healthy one. Like it's, it, like, it's not a terrible instinct at all. It's a great one. Like, okay, so my favorite example of this in storytelling is Peter Parker as Spider-Man. He tells the lamest jokes ever when he's fighting crime. He's scared out of his mind. Think about what he's doing. I'm dressed in tights letting people shoot at me. Yeah, that's a little bit scary. If you really sit there and think about that, it's like, you're out of your fucking mind. And you know what? He's like, I'm out of my fucking mind. I better make myself laugh so I don't think about it so hard. And sometimes Spider-Man's actually funny. Sometimes he's terrible. I like him when he, sometimes he's, he's a little bit in the middle. Sometimes he hits like a zinger. Sometimes it sucks because that's real. That that feels incredibly like real. And right because that's it. Like laughter is one of the best medicines for dealing with dark shit. It just is. Yep. We can laugh. We can like we can move past a dark and terrible moment. 
that's life. Like that is that that is a good coping mechanism. If we're scared, we can laugh. We're gonna to to go past that moment. If we're in we're absolute despair, if we can find a moment to laugh in the middle of the darkness, there's like a little light cracks the cracks the black, and suddenly light has color again. That's how it works. Like it, it that that's just that's just how it works, right? It's when you can't laugh. It's when you can't feel. Right. Also, a very human reaction. There's a point where we all overload. We all have that, like in a, in that threshold in us. But that's when that's when things can be dangerous. But laughing, if you can laugh, you are. I mean, that's resiliency, and that's actually not a terrible thing. I think. I think honestly, we need more laughter right now. I think it would help yeah. a lot of people. I th I agree with that. I um during lockdown we don't really have that anymore in florida but when things were really really serious i got pretty stressed and depressed like a lot of people um and i was never alone i was always trapped in a room with somebody and i'm a complete introvert so that was hard but uh i i got this book called burnout and it's about breaking something called the stress cycle where we're we're wired to run or fight or freeze or i think the term is fawn where you um you know you get friendly with whatever's making you scared and in modern life you don't you know when your boss is chewing you out in a meeting you cannot hit your boss you cannot run out the door you just have to sit there and take it and that's why we're going home and we're stressed because we're not doing this thing that's ingrained in our brain to do so when you do things like you watch a comedy not only are you escaping from what's you know stressing you out but you're laughing and the more you laugh, the louder you laugh, the more your body feels like you are screaming. Yeah. And if you're even imagining, I mean, like, not moving, if you're even imagining running or doing all these things, like fighting or something, your body has the same reaction to that as it would as if you escaped a predator or killed a predator. Um, so when people play violent video games, that's why it works. Because yeah. you're tricking your body. Well, no, you, 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 yeah, because we, we all have that tendency. I, for me, I, there's a game called Devil May Cry. So there's mm -hmm. this weapon called an axe. I love swinging that bad boy because the sound it makes when it destroys a demon is, is glorious, right? It just, it's a glorious sound. Yeah. I feel better when I do it. And that's okay. That, that's a impulse that, again, I'm using the impulse in a constructive way. Mm -hmm. No, but I will say this, I, I no longer, I do respond, I don't necessarily want to hit or deal with my boss that way, but I do respond to them now that I'm older. Because mm -hmm. I, give a shit, I give a shit far less. Yeah. And just, that's just the way I'm wired, I just give a shit. Yeah. Like, I, I had a boss come to me and they were trying to give me shit for something I didn't do. So I just flat out just, that's not me. Well, it's like, you're, you're, they were just accusing me of leaving early. I said, like, no, I'm leaving when everybody else is. And they tried to like do it. It's like no, 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 no. It's like this ain't me. This is you. I'm leaving when everybody else is leaving. Tried. They tried. They tried. But it's like I wouldn't. I wouldn't like. I wouldn't cooperate. And and that's just like I've learned. I've learned a very valuable lesson in life. When you're younger, when when you're younger and you're or you're a little bit more insecure in your position, I, what ha tends to happen is, um, you have a tendency to take more because you're you're not sure what the correct correct way to negotiate where your position is and what you can yeah. negotiate with now that i'm older it's more like this if i fuck up i own it just i just i don't excuse it i don't i i mean i if they want an explanation i give it to i just own it because i i have i found as i've gotten older i get away with way more shit admitting when i do something wrong than when i don't because it's like oh my god you, you, you're admitting it's like yeah i'm not i'm not like because bosses are happy with that too. Because it's like, oh my god, he's taking responsibility for his actions. Like, yeah, yeah, I, I fucked up. I admit it. Yeah. Why'd you do it? Sometimes they'll ask why. Sometimes they understand it. Sometimes they don't. But that doesn't really matter, real, other than the sense that I've already owned it. 
it doesn't really matter anymore. It doesn't matter anymore. So I'm willing to do that when it's not me. But here's the thing. I look at two things, my pay scale, what I'm being paid to do this job. Uh-huh. And and because that's also going to pay for my like like uh, and that's also going to deal like deal with how much tolerance I have for the job, and and number two I I look at it kind of like I don't actually have to cooperate. I mean I don't like there's a negotiation that goes on with that. I have to do the job. I have to do the job I'm being asked to do to the best of my ability. That's non negotiable. Everything else though is. And I've learned that as I've gotten older. So I I have found that it's actually sadly quite easy to turn the stress back on the bosses if you know what you're doing. But um all but also it's just the maturity of dealing with like I'm comfortable in position. I also have a bit of a I don't really care part of me anymore. I just don't. I'm just I'm just wired. It's like I'm a I'm a writer, freelancer first, and everything else is second. And that's my head, that's my headspace and that's my stance. So you're not going to be able to threaten or coerce me in any way I don't want to. Now that now I am here, ergo, it means I do want to be here. But I'm there's only so many ways I'm going to be treated. And I'm not going to basically deal with petty shit. I'm not here to do that. If you want to do petty shit, do it with somebody else who cares because I don't. It's about priorities. Yeah. I mean, if, if you prioritize your own happiness over a job, that's what you're going to do. And honestly, like, Mm -hmm. I think the reason why the older you get, the less you give a shit is because you've already gone through the shit. Mm -hmm. Um, You've already been there. You know what that's like. It's not as scary anymore. Well, that's it. Well, once you go through like, like in my particular case, I lived in the States. I start, I was poor. I had nothing. It's kind of hard to traumatize me that way anymore because I've already been there. I don't want to go back. Don't get me wrong. But you're not going to scare me that way because I've already been there and I know I can survive it. Consequently, that means I like that. Consequently, that means that any position I'm put in, I know I can deal with it. And that might be like, that might be a bit of a coopery slash arrogance, but it also, but it gives me a certain comfort where it goes like, you know what? This kind, of, like, especially with certain kind of jobs, especially if their jobs are just not great, you just realize that you don't need it. Like, you can replace it. Ironic, yeah. ironically speaking, like they, like, in, 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 in a lot of day jobs, the dream of the worker they can cycle in, cycle out, and be replaceable. But a lot of these jobs, as a result, have become just that, replaceable. I think, I think you, like, you are what you eat is very yeah. appropriate. Yeah, have you heard of uh, this thing they're calling the Great Resignation? Just unreal numbers of people quitting their jobs in April. Mm-hmm. More than I think they've seen in a very long time. Not getting fired, just leaving their jobs. Because I, we've gone through so much stuff. Hello. We've gone through so much stuff um, since early 2020 that made us all reflect on our lives and think okay if i died would i be happy with where i'm at right now i'm not gonna deal with this much longer well i mean there, there's a there's an openly i don't give a shit moment now yeah yes like and, and that's like it's a, it's an interesting thing when when people have like it puts into perspective that when you go through a time like this not much really matters this is like I did a piece and I put, I put it up on my blog called "How My Personal Apocalypse Prepared Me for This One." Because again, I started and went through all these things. When this hit, I was like this because I didn't. I, I it didn't hit me the same way because I've already faced death. I've already faced my mortality. So this doesn't really do anything to me other than it's like. Well, it's something else that can kill me. Okay, let's move on. And it sounds like I'm taking it like a joke. I'm not. It just, it doesn't hit me the same way. It just will not register. It will not scare me. Right? It just, it just can't. So um, I'm like, okay, I'm going to roll with this because this time will not last. It never does. You guys are pretty much out in the open now. Right? I mean, I, I don't. Yeah, it, unless people are literally dropping dead in the streets, I don't think you guys are locking down again. You're done. 
I just, in Florida yeah. at least, I think that it wouldn't matter if people were dropping dead in the yeah, street. Yeah, so I mean, I mean, like, you, you, <laughs> yeah, it, like that's 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 the thing. Like, I'm coming at this. I'm coming at this from like, uh, I'm coming at this from like, like that's that's where you're at. Like, you guys are done. But you guys admit it or not, you're done, right? What people do at this point is going to be entirely up to people. Canada, we're still we're still dealing with with some things, and and we're going to experiment with some things. I think we shouldn't. That's gonna be that's gonna be interesting to see how that plays out. But on the flip side, I might be I I, I think I think um, in my case anyway, I, I'm because of what I want to take with the podcast. I'm probably heading stateside in probably about nine months anyway. So I'm just like I just I I kind of again because again we're talking about the Great Resignation. What matters to you? Like, what right. do you really give a shit about? Because that's all anyone's going to care about. Because this is only the beginning. In one sense, this is only the beginning. The housing market's going to collapse. A lot of what civilization, as we've known it for the last 20, 30 years, is about to go through some major under changes. Un, un, like big, big under uh, big, some big ones. Some some great things are going to come out of this. Some bad things are going to happen too. Good and bad. You just have but to roll with it. But yeah, well, that's it. But here, but here's the thing: people have already kind of dealt. Like, listen, I just dealt with my mortality and death. <laughs> yep. To everything else, and yeah. my way, right? And, that, and that's lit. And that's exactly. what it's going to be like. Like, you're not gonna, you're not gonna. This is going to, for someone like me, something like this emboldens me. It doesn't break me. It makes me even more determined to do what I want. Because yeah. what else is there? What do I have to lose? Uh, but, yeah. yeah, you know, I um, I don't know. I had gotten a little, I had gotten comfortable before 2020. Um, when I was younger, I went through a lot of stuff. I was homeless for a spell, uh, so I I climbed out of that and I became financially secure, good job, yada yada. And I think I got comfortable in that to where I started to feel like. You know, I'm going to be okay. I, I'm solid. My feet are on the ground. And then right before everything really came down with COVID, when it was still something that's happening overseas, uh, a friend of mine died. And it was just so unbelievable because he was the most responsible person. And he was 35. Mm-hmm. And, and and just living his life, going to work, eating like normally. He wasn't doing drugs or anything. He just got a mysterious lung disease and died. And that just, it killed me because he had a wife that was overseas and they were working on um, visa stuff. And all he wanted in the world was for her and him to live in the same house, no matter where that was. And he never got to make that happen. Mm-hmm. So then COVID happens and I'm like, well, shit, that could be me. Mm-hmm. You know? And uh, what do I, I need to do the things that I want to do with my life. Absolutely. I, 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 I like there, there are a lot of things I kind of want to see and do. And there's a lot of people I want to meet. And I just, really don't care about much else because none of the rest of the stuff matters and again it's going to be really interesting because i I think what's going to happen right this minute people are still kind of in shock but after going through the another year of about another year from now there's going to be a lot of i don't give a shit itis from everybody because honestly you don't got much to lose and in a world like this, like I mean, the hard reflection of the world, like the hard, the hard thing about the world that you're, you're kind of seeing is, is this the world you want to live in? And I think for a lot of us, if we're going to be very honest with ourselves. No, I don't want a world where I have to, I have to go jump through hoops to do things I want to do. I don't want that world. That world sucks. I don't want a world where you know what I have to work my ass off to get something, get something as a, a simple want like a house, and pay through an extra exorbitant fee for it, so I'd be put in some kind of weird bondage and slavery. 
I don't want the cost of my food to be so high that the only thing I can afford is like one lollipop from a 7-Eleven. And you think I'm joking. I mean, I look at sometimes the prices of how things are going. We live in a world where cost of living has become a serious oh, problem. Yeah. And what a lot of us are realizing is that a lot of this, this is irrelevant. Like it's not worth like the American dream, which is still is up here in Canada too. For the most part, it's a crock of shit. It doesn't it doesn't really exist anymore. I got a smile on your face. I got a smile on your face when I said that. It's a myth. It's 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 a myth that stems from manifest destiny. It's propaganda. Mm-hmm. Um, it just we believe it because we were told to. Yeah. That's all there is to it. But I mean, the, the American dream, I don't, it's also pretty colonializing. It's, 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 because I mean, <sighs> Americans that have been here forever, they, they don't have this dream of going into a new place and making it their own. This is our place. We've been here. What a, this isn't a frontier. So, our needs and desires change. I don't feel like killing myself to live somewhere. I own a house uh, because to me, it was really important for me to feel like I was never going to be homeless again. Mm-hmm. But now that I own a house, I'm like, why did I do that? <laughs> you know, like now I now I feel like I have an anchor tied to me. This isn't something because, that feels because ritual. because I, I I get where you're coming from. Here, here's where you were coming from. You're coming from say like me. I have a po- I have a poverty I have a poverty um, trauma because again when I because you start like you knew you know what this is like you're not sure in it what the next thing is happening you're, you're you're praying to God or whatever you believe in that something's gonna come but you're not sure what that looks like or is and no one's gonna help you it's coming to help you or it doesn't seem like no one's coming to help you you're on your own you gotta figure this shit out and it's scary right it is fucking scary. And, and then and then uh, you get out of it somehow miraculously you, through help of others through your own ingenuity whatever the case may be it worked your ass out of it you got out and you changed your life for the better you never want to go back to that again well for you, so for you so for you so for you you're like well what's if I have a house I'll never go back to it again makes total sense when you think about it like that right yeah. Then, then you finally get it, and you realize, what the fuck did I do? This is yeah. dumb. I didn't want this. But I, I actually want want this house. <laughs> yeah, I didn't want this. this is what you, what you actually wanted. This is what you actually wanted. You never wanted to go through that feeling again, all right? And that, 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 that's what you actually wanted. You just manifested it that in a. It's something I really like. Like for me, I, I'm, I'm. I'm looking at the fact that, okay, I, I told you, my day job decided to go on a layoff, right? Yeah. And we're going on layoff. So what ended up happening with me was, what ended up happening with me was, um, I'm like, well, this is an opportunity to grab my destiny. But now here, here's the thing, right? I got to pick what the hell that, what does that, what does that look like? What is that to me? Because I can do all kinds of stuff, right? Um, I do all kinds of other, like, I do all kinds of stuff. I, I, I write books, I podcast, I, I can edit comics, I can edit prose, I can, I can, I can do interviews, and I can do journalism kind of stuff, and so this, I got this, like, giant pile of things I can do, so which one makes the most sense for me to actually, make, like, right, and it's like, <laughs> okay, what does that look like? Then on top of that, you're like, okay, you don't actually know when you're actually going back to work. They say it's a week, but it could be another week. There's that little bit of trauma, so it's like, so the temptation is like, I'm gonna freeze because I'm not knowing when my next month bit of paycheck's gonna come in. That's not what I'm supposed to do. What I'm supposed to do is, okay, I have a gig I'm getting paid for tomorrow. So tonight I gotta hand it, write it, finish it, hand it in so that I can get paid for it. So then I can look, so tomorrow, now that I'm freed up and doing some other stuff, I do other things. Like maybe I get my Patreon in like the proper tip top shape and do some of the things I could do there. I keep writing the book I'm writing. I pitch articles to different places. Mm-hmm. And all the while, all the while, just like, okay, 
what do I do best? And, you know, something really simple, like would someone pay me five bucks a month if I just did a like an audio message with inspirational stuff every day for like a month? Right. Would, would people pay for that? I, I don't know. Right. But I mean, the, like the stuff like and I, again, finding figuring out what that is. But my trauma point, my trauma point is, oh, my God, when's my next check coming in? Because if I know for sure what that is, it's a lot easier for me to do stuff. And that's something I just, I really, I reckon, like, again, we both have traumas from what we survived. Oh, okay. Wait, 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 which, which, which one? Jag, which one are you talking about? The, the, how my apocalypse prepared me for the apocalypse? Because that one came in. That was cool. That was a reprint. But yeah, but like, that's, that's, that's the thing, right? And, uh, there, I'm gonna do this real quick. So you wanna see my, my 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 history of publications? More things are coming, actually, in about a week. Publication history done, done. But yeah, like what 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 like does the, 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 again? That's why that's what happens. Like our traumas are a big part of our desires as well. You don't want to go through that feeling again. Here you go. You did the one thing you knew for sure that would. Now, did you want the burden that came with it? No. 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 <laughs> and now I'm like, wow, oh, we've got this house and don't like living in Florida so much. But, you know, I owe money on a house, so <laughs> I'm going to live in it. But, uh, yeah, um, you know, you were talking about the things like waiting for the paycheck to come, counting down the days, that kind of stuff. But for me... I was always so used to whenever I looked at my bank account seeing a number that was just terrifying. So I don't like looking at my bank account now. Now that I have a steady paycheck, I don't want to look at my bank account. I like to do my bills and just not spend money. <laughs> you know, that's me. Like I just won't spend money and yeah, then I'll be yeah. okay. <laughs> Right. I just don't go to the store or eat out. I'll be fine. <laughs> I'm totally good. I'm yeah. okay. Ooh, books and CDs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There you go. That that's that's where you get me. I'm like, okay, that and uh, the occasional guilty sin of microtransactions and <laughs> phone games. But uh, yeah. Oh yeah. God, the phone games. I know. I'm a yeah, total I... sucker, and I, you know, I'm an actual gamer. I play real games. Like you were talking about, you know, the, the the visceral reaction. I love Fallout because when you get the shot just right, their head like goes out like a baseball. <laughs> <It's the best. laughs> but, uh, I, I I agree with Jay. There should not be microtransactions in no. Fallout this game. It's just, it's not good. It, it, it's too tempting. Like when you're having a really hard time and you know. And that's oh, what's all the fun. Oh, what's, what's fall uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Well, you know, I, I love them all. I'm going to, I'm going to say something a little controversial. I even love Fallout New Vegas. Uh, specifically, because I could play a Black Widow in that. <laughs> if, you, if you go and you sleep with that one mobster guy before you kill him, you get uh, that achievement. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, then I do feel judged. I feel very judged. Thank okay, you. Okay. <laughs> 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 okay. But, yeah. That is. But you're fine. There you go. There you go. Yeah. But, 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 I, but we do have to have a little heart come to Jesus meeting about like microtransactions, and that's not good. It's not good. No. Yeah, I I was so excited about Fallout 76. I was just so excited because I do MMORPGs as well, uh, like World of Warcraft, Final Fantasy, and uh, and I played it. And I I really tried really tried very much to like that game but i mean so, no so i i'm not mature enough for mmos or netflix or, or any of those things you're not you, 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 netflix 
Yes, here's why. Here's why. Here's why. Here's why. I'm an obsessive, and I know mm-hmm. I'm an obsessive. So I'll give you my Netflix story, and then I'll tell you. I'm telling you my MMO story. My MMO story was World of Warcraft, but my but my but my Netflix story was. So the first time I did Netflix was Daredevil season one. Good show. Like, you know, yeah. you've been, you've been like watching that. No one's going to judge you for binge watching Daredevil in like one and a half days. No one. When it's kill a kill and you watch the full series in one night and you realize that maybe just maybe you have an impulse control issue with, with, with Netflix, it's just too easy to let the thing continue. And you're like, you know, I cannot do it. I, like, 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 Literally, my author bio, my next author bio is I'm not mature enough for Netflix. And MMOs are worse. They are actually much, much worse. They because, are. because here's the thing about MMOs. They are almost all of them, not all of them, but almost all of them, um, have a very, very cool world build design. And, yeah. And, and you can do a lot. Like World of Warcraft is a cool community. And they just keep expanding and expanding well, the story and the lore. And, yeah. It, because it's because again they know they 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 know warcraft unfortunately this is the thing changed our financial culture truthfully and it also changed how games are sold right right because how, like how the, the expansion concept has now inf- it infected every part of gaming and if it wasn't for world of warcraft there would be no cryptocurrency so that's uh, right. that, that's an interesting little. I've like, never thought of that. Yeah. Because if, right. because if people weren't mining gold in World of Warcraft for real money, crypto never would have been an idea that would have been even been considered, right? But people did that, and at one point, unofficially, World of Warcraft gold was worth more than actual economies. Yes. No joke. That. I yeah, remember that. Yeah. 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 So I mean it's pretty great, actually. Yeah, that's a cra- that's a crazy thing, right? But it changed how we looked at money. It changed how we looked at gaming. And it and who knew that a little freelance side gig would impact how we looked at money today? Who knew? Right? But that's that's the thing, right? If it wasn't for that, it, so World of Warcraft changed the world. And actually, now that I think about it, hey, Jag, can I pitch that to your video game thing? Because that would be a really cool fluent thing to write, and I would totally do it, right? Because that's my idea, and I came up with it first. Mwahaha. <laughs> but, um, but no, it, it's it's true. Like, 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 that, like, what, like, MMO changes the gaming industry. So here would be my pitch. The pitch is really simple. World of Warcraft is the gateway drug to cryptocurrency, because it was. It legitimately was. If it wasn't for the fact that players were actually mining for gold, we wouldn't have the crypto concept today. Also, World of Warcraft is the precursor to how we do gameplay today. There's actual real history behind that. It's a really I, good game. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's just, it's it's... Like it, it stands the test of time. Every time, you know, like I, I've tried out different MMORPGs and I've, I've played some really good ones. But then, like you know, even though you've, oh, <laughs> Evercrack, true. Ever, Evercrack was, but, but Evercrack yeah. was good, but World of Warcraft was better. But it was before it. Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, no, ever, 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 ever quest. For those people that may not remember this, because I have to remember that my audience may not have been alive in some of these games that actually existed. Oh God, don't it's say just, that. It, it's the truth. We're, we're in a video game community. We gotta actually keep that in mind. It's okay. Listen, listen, listen. Yeah. I have a CD. It look, look, I have a healthy CD right here. It's a CD. I'm old. I'm good with that. I'm old and cranky and it's back in my day bullshit. That's okay. But um, he, he, here's the thing. No, no, Jag, it's not. But the thing is, crypto never would have existed. The mining for gold that the Chinese gold farmers did, right, is actually what led to the whole idea of coming up with the crypto program. It's the precursor, right? Oh, but, no, not garbage. It's still, like, the, still oh, oh, but here's the Sorry. Thing. <laughs> here's, the, here's the thing about WoW. Here's the thing about WoW. Here's the thing about games like WoW. Game I really wish I had gotten into, I would have enjoyed tremendously is League of Legends. 
Okay. Will do. Will do. We'll, 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 we'll try to make the connection. I will say that I think the Final Fantasy XIV is a better MMORPG than World of Warcraft. It, it, but... it, so it, it really depends on what you're, you're coming to play for. I'm not actually saying that like, in terms of gameplay. Okay, so here, here's the thing. I like card games, collectible card games. Mm-hmm. Right? Right? Um, I love collectible card games. My favorite one, Shadowverse. It's a great card game. I enjoy it. But Hearthstone has the best community. Hearthstone's pretty good. Yeah. Hearthstone's okay. It's not a great. It, like much like WoW, right? Much Guild like Wars. Yeah. Yeah, Guild Wars yeah. Two is pretty good. It's yeah. been a while since I played that, so maybe I'm just not remembering it as well. It's not. True. But again, it's it's also like again, video games aren't just about the gameplay. It's about mm-hmm. the community. The one thing Blizzard does extensively well. This this is their this is they figured this out. It never their content has dwindled. So their content has dwindled over the years. There's a lot of better games out there, but community, the community on Blizzard is still really, really good, right? It, that that's the thing. I'm not and Jay, I'm not saying that there aren't great other great communities. But this is one of those situations where tenure does have a bit of a say in how people call. People know the Blizzard community. I'm not saying people don't know the Guild Wars community. I'm just saying that Blizzard has kind of cultivated that reputation of being a very community-friendly place, and they've done a very good job of that. That's where they, and that's where they focus their stuff on, and that's why Blizzard still still makes a buck. Even though I think I'm much like you, I agree, gaming's kind of crap. It's like the game, the games have gone have gone kind of downhill. It's okay if you like to get listen. That all set, Park. It's okay if you like the games, right? Right, they, right. They, it's okay if you like. Look, we, we all have taste. I'm a tales guy when I play RPGs. I love Persona when I play RPGs. Mm. That's that's who I am. And Nino Kuni, like like Wrath of the White Witch, is one of my favorite RPGs ever. None of these are not are necessarily um, current games because again, I'm old and I'm 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 content with being old and shut up and all that other wonderful fun stuff, right? About being old and middle aged and crazy, but 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 here's but here's the uh, here's the deal, right? Um, you like what you like. You're in a community you care about, um, and you probably have friends that play that you play with all the yeah. time, and that's why you go do it. You don't do it because. It's like when I play Magic, or like when I play Magic. I play Magic because I love the community. I don't need to be the biggest, baddest player anymore. I don't worry about being the best deck in the world. I don't care about any of that crap. Mm-hmm. I care about the people I play with. That's what it's all about. And if you're around people you really like to play with, it doesn't matter really what the game is. Yeah. For the most part. I mean, unless the game really sucks, and <laughs> it has to really suck, right? Like, um, it's like uh, with ESO. I was a beta tester for ESO, and I was really excited because I love Elder Scrolls games. But, and, and it's got really good features, you know? It's, you're very flexible with what you can do with your characters. Beautiful game. Um, but it's a game, it's an MMORPG based off of games that are single player. So, its community is a bunch of people that don't like to play with other people or it was initially like she's saying uh it it has changed a little bit i do play it a little bit but it's not the same but, level but, but, as but, others. But, but, but again jag i'm okay with being uncool just keep that in mind, okay? I'm okay with it. And also, and also, like I said, I'm not up to date on a lot of the games right now, and I'm good with that because I'm still playing the games because I'm creating shit all the time now. So it's like I'm, 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 I'm still like I'm finally getting to play Tales of Berseria like tomorrow. I'm excited. It's taken me a long time to get to play this game properly. I did a little like, ex- like early like uh, um, stream with it, but now I'm like. Holy crap, I can actually play it. I love the Tales games. I'm a big Tales guy. But it's like, it takes me forever to get the games because I'm always creating, right? But, so, 
you got to, I mean, yeah. But yeah, yeah. But, but yeah, that's your bread and butter, Dag. Of course you're going to be doing it. Hey, Red Hawk, dude. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Yeah. Red came back. Yeah, hey, Red. Yeah, so, but it, it's one of those things where, where you got to look at it and, and you got to be blunt, right? And say, like, you got to pick and choose your games. And one of the best ways to choose your games is that, are you, do you like the people you're playing with? Yeah. Right? Yeah. And you're helping with who you play with, right? I'm, I'm like you. I have so much stuff going on. I don't really have that much time to game anymore, which is kind of sad because I love it. <laughs> but uh, when I start to feel bored, because there's always a moment where you're starting to grind, you know, uh, that's when I stop. I don't power through it to get to the exciting bits. I stop. Or, and this is this is really, this is a big admission. If I like a game a whole lot, a single player game. Okay, so not an MMR where it's just going to expand and expand. But if I like a game a lot, I will get almost to the point of finishing the game and then I will stop. Because <laughs> I don't like endings. <laughs> I hate it. I can't take it. I, the achievement that you get when it finishes, it's not good enough for me because at that point, I don't, you know, I don't get to go back and enjoy all the stuff I enjoyed before. Yeah, it's uh, like, no, I, I see, it depends on the game. I, I, I love, like, certain games are worth the ending. Um, again, I love good story, like story base. Um, she, she, um, she is actually, she, she really is. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that when we get to the plugs. Okay. Uh, edge, edge gaming. Cool. Um, no, oh I, my gosh. Hey, yeah. hey, that's my friend. Hi, incomplete genius. <laughs> welcome to the, welcome to the, welcome to the stream. Right. This is actually this has been a really cool stream. I should yeah. talk about games more often. Um, but uh, but no, like I like some games are. I love endings of some games. Like I'm a Persona guy, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and I love that series. And the story is in the story in three is dark, deep, and wonderful. Mm -hmm. uh, Persona four is like Scooby Doo. It's totally a Scooby Doo thing. It's it's hilarious. Five. Right is just wow. Like five is just an amazing experience. All right, yeah, right. And oh, hey, Jag. Like I said, I'm trying to get more streamers on the stream. We'll definitely be doing more game stuff as 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 uh, as, a, as a general rule of thumb. I really want. I love talking. Game. Again, I'm in the game. I'm in the gaming community. I'm definitely going to talk video games more here. It's kind of one of the goals. Um, but. Uh, but no, like when you, when you, I love good stories and I think video games have some of the best stories, right? Not just immersive experiences, but the best games in any. So like, I love, like, again, I'm a big fan of Persona because Persona has these great, like crazy beginnings, fun, great tone. It, it, the games are really done. Like Persona 5 is a thief game. You're sneaking around, stealing treasure and in a very, very fun, unique way. It's really cool. And, and so, but the ending is so satisfying that it's just like, it's worth the payoff. Like those games work really hard to craft their endings. Some games though, it's, some games are kind of meh. Like there are some games where you're just like, and that's it. As much as I love Nino Kuni, the ending is meh, right? So. This is a recent development for me, to be honest, because I know exactly what you're talking about. Like with Bioshock. The endings are fantastic on those, but um, I don't, it just—it's hard. It's really hard, and I think I think I know the point where I broke, and it was with Final Fantasy XV, and they've changed the game since I played it when it was new, and I think it was because of this, because enough people complained about this. But there's a point, you know, it's it's about brotherhood you know it's about these friends that are off on this adventure together and then you get to this building and you're alone and it's super dark and it's super depressing and there's nothing fun or lighthearted left and I just at that point it was like god no take me back to the last chapter I don't want to finish this anymore 
<laughs> Sarah, you know, so for me, the ending that pissed me off, and I know there's a lot of people that uh, know this, I like Final Fantasy 13. It's, it's, mm-hmm. it's not a perfect game. Any stretch of the imagination, there's a, there's a little part of me that enjoys the the meta of that game. I really enjoy. Right. Thirteen two is the worst ending I've ever seen. That that ending legitimately pissed me off, like legitimately. And I was like, "This is what you can do." So I like screw you. But again, like notice what we have in common here. Like we have these big businesses dictate. Like they, like like what Jay was mentioning Blizzard earlier. In terms of their quality of gameplay and square and their quality of gameplay like we remember the experiences of like these like i like i love playing the earlier final fantasy games i think the reason why final fantasy 7 remake is such a popular game is even though Good story in a way it's a decent well actually to, to me my favorite final fantasy story is six still is six i love it because the bad guy won and won in a great way but um but um that all said, it's a story, it's characters you really enjoyed. The world was immersive. I do too, Jack. I actually legitimately do. Um, but I, yeah. Um, it's one of those, it's one of those games, it's one of those games you know a little bit what that experience is gonna be like. And for uh, people like us that grew up with these games before, right? We want that feeling again. We don't want I don't want to play a game to be dark and depressing. I don't mind having like dark moments in a game. It's like when you read a good story. I don't want my story to be completely happy, happy because it's not yeah. realistic. Right. <laughs> but, 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 but hey, not hey. If you can write sappy stuff, you rock because I that's something like right this minute. I was like creatively speaking, right now, Alice is fighting Hercules in my current in my in my current outline because Alice and Wonderland and Greek mythology are matching up. Oh, so I, cool. came with, I, I came up with yeah. a really fun way to introduce Hercules in this story, and it's gonna be it's it's gonna it's it's a really 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 cool, um, it's a really cool little like thing I I built up and it's really really fun, and it's like okay this is cool it's fun, but the whole story is is literally about what's like the the the, the way her head works and there's a lot of light and dark and going on in that okay. yeah right there has to be. Because no, like, everything's a roller coaster. None of us. I woke up this morning, and I was good. I saw my grandmother, my grand, and, my, and and her boyfriend. We had a good time, good lunch. Tomorrow might be a shit day. The day after that might be a fantastic day, right? Life is not filled with this like steady diet of of uh, it, it doesn't work. Mm-hmm. But when you're playing a bit, like especially like right now, like we were talking about, like, we're playing video games to kind of escape, right? To kind of escape reality. So we want fun filled experiences that matches our expectation storytelling is still a big part of video games and like especially like we're talking rpgs mmos things like that that's a storytelling is a huge part of that right so we but again because we put the name final fantasy or world of warcraft earlier games a lot of us that have been playing for years and years and years and years have a certain because those early games especially those early experiences were amazing Final Fantasies four, six, seven, eight, nine. Like those are fun games. They're just super fun games. A uh, World of Warcraft. All the expansions. All the expansions that have come out since. Super fun experiences for the players yeah. to experience that. But these these franchises have been around for a very long time. They're not those franchises anymore. They're something else. They're not. They're they're. And even like when you look at books, when you look at comic books, same thing. My Batman is not necessarily the Batman that's out there today. My Harley Quinn is not the same Harley Quinn that's out there today. My Harley Quinn was was Paul Dini's one from the Batman animated series in the nineties. I love that. I can love that, that series. Yeah, everybody does, right? Best best Batman. Was oh, yeah, that it, Batman. It, it, it's best a great Batman. Yeah. But that's that's a great series. But the thing is. Everything evolves over time, and so do we. Yeah. Right. Final Fantasy Fifteen. Right? Final Fantasy Fifteen. I got the sense isn't for me. It's just not. So remake will be because that was the game I played growing up. It will be new and wonderful and different and great and amazing. But I already know what that experience kind of feels like because yeah. even though even though it is it it will. 
feel like that game, even though it's being reimagined significantly. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, that makes sense. I um, I was really into King's Quest when I was young. Uh, I really loved it. And then they just didn't have any games for a really long time. And then Telltale Games joined up with them and did a King's Quest and it was so good. I cried. I cried. It felt like a rite of passage <laughs> um, because it was the last game, and and it was it, it was very clear that they knew it was the last game when they wrote it. Uh, it was so beautifully done. God, I loved it. It was so good. But and it was Telltale. I love Telltale games. I hate what they did to the creators of the games, but the creators did a damn good job with Telltale. Well, well, well that's it, that's it, right? Like you know, like those 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 are like we we want to be entertained because we want to feel something. When we're creating stuff too, we want to create stuff that makes other people feel because we remember what it's like to feel shit. That's what that's yeah. that's it, right? That's that right. This this life isn't about going being numb to everything. It's the opposite. You want to feel everything. But and this is the hard thing about life too, is you want to feel okay passing through all these rites of passage. Right? And that that's where it gets tricky. That's where that's where life gets scary. Cause you're not necessarily guaranteed to in the real world, you're not guaranteed to walk away from it. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. But in a game, but in a game, or in a story, or in a work of art, you get this whole experience and empathy and feeling and growth, and that's what it's all about, ultimately, right? That that's always that that that's what we that's what we go for. We don't we we're yeah. not here. we're not here we're not we don't want to waste our time with nothing because, like, yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, like you're not living. Mm -hmm. exactly. I'm not here to produce and consume. No, you're, you're here. You're here. You're here to do your thing. If we have to play the part of the produce consume stuff, right? Um, you know, we'll we'll have a we'll have a wonderful we'll have a like we're not robots. Okay. We can't just exist. Existence is not a. Um, not a good philosophy. We can, anyone can just get by, but eventually, eventually, that comes to the point where you just want to stay in bed because ultimately, yeah. if, if there's no difference between just getting by, working your ass off, or just getting by, going to bed, eventually, you're just going to decide to stay in bed. You got to go for something that really makes you feel it, you know? Yeah. No. Exactly. I just. It was funny when I when I started really getting into writing because I'd always done a little writing you know copywriting mostly about taxes uh, which is you know sounds like a lot of fun but not as much as you might think um, but when I really started getting into it for myself when I started writing my novels it it was somewhat inspired by reading other books and not feeling satisfied mm -hmm. That's not the feeling I wanted to come away with. <laughs> so no. I'm just going to go make my own story. <laughs> Those feelings in it. Uh, you know, I did. You, you decided you could do it better. No, not necessarily better. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, we're going to go back to the very beginning. We're going to go back to the very beginning of this conversation. So we are all a little bit like a little maniacal. I'm going to call you out a little oh, bit. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah, okay. uh, a little bit. No, no, you believe you could, and here's why you believe you could, right? Um, that right. This is this is how to put this so delicately. You are trying very, very hard to go for a feeling, and you had a certain expectation. You have read a lot of books, consumed a lot of media. You have a good. You built up your taste to whatever those tastes are. Mm -hmm. And the authors, and, and don't get me wrong, it's harder than it looks. Oh yeah, but 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 in, on your internal monologue, whether you realize it or not, is saying this: I can do better than this. I can create a bigger feeling, a better feeling than what this is. Our 
Hello. All right. And um, that's the truth, right? That's the truth. That's it, it's the it's the honest admission as an artist gamer. So I'm gonna put Jag on the spot here. We had a little conversation about like an author's collective trying to do something cool in Ottawa. She felt that they really draw us, right? Right. And, and and the thing is, and 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 the thing is, right? She was going to me. I was really, I'm jealous that these are guys coming up there. And I, and I looked at her. It's like, Jag, you can kick their ass. And I, the reason I say it's not because you're a better writer necessarily than they are in terms of crafting a story, although she's good in her own right. It's because she knows games. And she's better at those games than they are. And she, I know if she really put her pot, put her into it, she'd kick their ass. And it's not even like, it's not even like a close, uh, it wasn't even a close deal. And she knew it too, because after I, right, she knew it and said deep down, that's what it was. They're doing it and she wanted to do it. So, and, but she has to be willing to go out there and kick their ass. And that's the thing. It's, it's hard as a writer, as a writer, it's very, very hard to actually go out there and believe that you can do this, that you are, that you, because again, who, yeah. there's, there's that, there's a little imposter syndrome more going on. Right. Men, right. Um, who am I to do this? But you look at this like, oh shit, I can do better than that. And then there's literally that, that little, that there is that little war in your head. Yeah. But, also, that, but then ultimately you craft that story and you're like, I'm going for it. Fuck it. I believe in myself and not begin it and you do otherwise you wouldn't be writing it to begin with yep yep i yeah i guess <laughs> because i i mean i just i just finished writing the end of my trilogy and it's very bittersweet because i feel like i've made this big achievement but at the same time i'm like oh i miss my stories but I'm going through that. <laughs> I'm going through that whole thing where, like, you know, this is these were the first book in this trilogy was my debut novel. I have a long way to go as an author. I can only grow. So yeah. I'm judging myself, you know? And uh, I took that feeling of imposter syndrome. And I folded it up neatly because I know it's going to come back. And I just started writing something else because it distracts me from uh, judging myself. If I'm doing the thing, I don't have as much time to judge myself on the thing. Yes. No, see, see oh, cool. for me, for me I, I, I did my first book, my first novel. And I, I laughed at it. It's funny, but it could be better. The next book I'm doing going to be way better my and then suddenly and then, and here's like a boston like i did a poetry book called alice zero it's actually up for an award right now for like oh, for the elegant congrats. So imposter syndrome right here right and and, and 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 the other part is i'm going completely out of comfort zone but like so i'm doing a novella novel like novella size novel and a and an epic poetry story with Alice in Wonderland as well. So I'm doing both right now. And it's like, oh my God, how can I top it? And then I realize, um, I, 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 I realize something too. It's like, these are going to be better because I know more. I get the feeling what the feeling is going to be, feel like and all that stuff like that. And it's like, this is going to be better. And even so, I still have a lot to learn. And the next yep. book is going to be um it's going to be better and better and better and that's and that's doris not every book of mine is for jag right I, I, and that's cool the one she's really excited about is lights out right 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 the one she's really excited about is lights out but um and it and i can't wait to give her that i i can't really i can't wait to give her the ex very at the end of this month the extended graph of that because I've, I've made it better yeah um but but the thing is right um you go through that process of crafting a book and you do the best you can and then you do the next book and it's better hopefully yeah. you're saying something different and better or yeah um and that's the way and that's the way to do it like you don't just you, you don't you don't get to that like 
that kill the Buddha moment, I don't know when you actually murder the Buddha. I think somewhere along the way, you actually, as you as you crawl and let, try to do the things like, who did you admire reading when you grew when you when you when you were reading these books? Who oh gosh, um, <clears throat> Neil Gaiman, Neil Gaiman, for sure. Uh, Stephen King, um, Alan Moore. I really love Alan Moore. I love his, I, I love his, I, I love for Alan Moore. It's Promethea and yes. Yes. Thank you. That's the first time <laughs> anybody has said that before me. Sorry, no, I have no, figures no, no. and everything. No, because <laughs> Watchmen is a is a hell of a template, and honestly, in terms of of, the, of what he executed in the medium, Promethea is not Watchmen, but Promethea is a great story. So good, the way he weaves mythology and mm -hmm. his personal experience and research and magic and just it just he did such a beautiful job with yeah, it no no if, if you if you so the other one i really like from him is tom strong i love his take on I paul i still haven't i still haven't read that and i know yeah, that yeah, like yeah, no, tom, tom strong is it was ahead of its time it's an it, it's an old school pulp story with some really cool like sensibilities in there oh uh, um but outside of that, outside of that, right? You got like this. You got like this. Um, how do I put this? You got this like. Um, uh, so Alan Moore's good. So for me, it's Ray Bradbury, Isaac Asimov, Robert Jordan, right, and uh, a few others, and Charles Dillon, and a few others. Here's the deal. I'm trying to aspire to create the same feeling, feelings, and interaction. Really, they've gotten older and wiser, right? All right, click the eyes. I got an older riser, Michael Moorcock, Roger Zelazny. I'm a big Zelazny guy now that I'm older, right? Right, I love Zelazny. But the thing is, I'm like trying to become those guys in my head. I never will, but somewhere along the way, I'm hoping, I'm hoping to, um, uh, I'm hoping to, uh, yeah, I love Zelazny. He is no, he is one of my. Uh, He's one of my favorites. Like Amber is just brilliant, Jack. It's an unbelievably brilliant book. But the thing, but the thing about it, right, is these are these are people who I think have done brilliant pieces of work. Mm -hmm. Who am I to try to top that? But what I can do is I can honor the people I really admire and try to create some of the same feelings they did for me. That's what we do. That's why we wanted to get into this. And when you meet other authors, when you meet other authors that you read that are trying that and not doing it. it's like i can do better and deep down you, you acknowledge that right you yeah. have to know you, you gotta you, you, look it, it's okay for a writer to have an ego dare i say we need one <laughs> i think there's some things that uh people really do what's the word i'm looking for we we, we tear ourselves down for but like for instance on twitter we have a habit in the community of uh, ragging people for trying to get attention. What the hell is anybody doing on Twitter except trying to get attention? We're trying to That's engage. Nice. I'm actually literally writing an article for Writers Weekly right now about engagement. And the fact is, it's a big muscle that writers need to work on. That's what we do. We like we are in the Twitter era. We're in the Twitter era. We 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 look i'm not saying i'm not saying we should we should tweet like randomly stupid stuff i mean if that's your if that's your jam to go for it i mean go for it right? but, right? i feel like i tweet randomly stupid stuff to go I, 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 hey, hey listen hey, hey listen as long as as long as it's your randomly stupid stuff mm -hmm. that you're proud of it doesn't matter i listen i actually had people try to name my unicorn that farts rainbows in my novel like so, I mean, I mean, so, 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 I mean, I certainly cannot talk about like maturity on on on, mm -hmm. on Twitter, but here's the deal. It's about engagement. Right? It's what that's what I do on Facebook. That's what I do on LinkedIn. That's what I do on all these platforms. Because here's the thing: we are it, we are a business. As much as we are creative, we are a business. Guess how businesses market? Familiarity. Hey. Listen, I'm gonna do the talks about. I'm gonna do the talks about unicorns and parts rainbows. I'm okay with that. That's who I am as a brand, somewhat. Right? <laughs> there you go. That's a great way to look at it. That's your brand. That's right. You know, I I used to run social media campaigns. You know, when I was young, and uh, and I remember 
you know, having it drilled into my head, you know, professionalism. You don't take strong stances on anything. You have your brand. You stick to it, blah, blah, blah. And I, I joined Twitter on a dare, so I wasn't taking it seriously at all. And I am very open on there. <laughs> and, uh, but, but that's, 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 but that's me. Best. Yeah, but that's the best. It's just me. You do. Listen, we all, I, I, I've said this on many a past episode, we all have to embrace our inner Macho Man Randy Savage. <laughs> and you yeah. laugh when I say that. You laugh when I say this, but here's the truth, okay? What is his, his job? His job was to go, oh, yeah, thinking, thinking, and he would talk people into the building. Think about what he did. He had to get people, get off the comfort of their own couch, get into their car, go into an arena, buy an obnoxious amount of ticket to watch him not even really get beat up, or at least not the way, not the way people think he was getting beaten up, right? Right? So, and... He talked millions of people to come watch him perform. How did he do that? He knew who he was and he embraced it. You don't need, like, like you don't necessarily need a strong stance on everything. But, but, you need to be you. You need whatever that authentic you is. The thing about the Macho Man, this is what I said, as over the top as he was, that was who he was. You yeah. knew that, right? There was yeah. like, like you knew it on some level. That was who he really is. Yeah, he may not have been really mad at Jake the Snake Roberts, or he may not have been really mad at Ric Flair, but he was like, "The cream is gonna rise to the top, brother." And that, but that was him. Mm -hmm. he knew it, and yeah. he knew, knew it, and that was why he worked. Authors have to really, really look at who they are. We do not have the luxury of being complete introverts anymore. Now, we don't have to necessarily bring all our pieces, our, ourselves, out in the open. Mm -hmm. but we have to have a piece of ourselves we're willing to share with our audience, whatever that is. Right? It could be as simple as talking about your favorite television shows or favorite video games. You know, Jay can talk about why she hates Fallout 76 with a passion. Doris can talk about her art, right? Edge Games can talk about whoever, whatever games they like, right? It doesn't matter. What does matter, right, is that deep down on the inside, there's an authentic little piece of you willing to share with the audience mm -hmm. and will engage with the audience with because um, that's, that's the real secret that's what marketing is markers are creating recognition and engagement that's it it's not even about sales right that's something else entirely right it's about look i didn't know you from adam we had this great talk about video games right and doris that's probably good advice um, <laughs> that's probably a good thing but but, but, here's, but, here's, but here's but here's the deal mm -hmm. right but here's the deal right Whatever piece of yourself you're putting out there, you're like, it's, ah, I'm just going to be myself. Fuck, awesome. You're going, yo, yo, you'll go far because you'll find people like you. It's like, you know what? I like, I can do stupid humor stuff all the time. Right? I can do straight And that's great. In my case, I talk about flavors of ice cream. I motivate people. I do my podcast. I'm excited about people I interview. That's, that's legitimately me. And then occasionally I do random TikTok videos with motivation. I've been trying some experiments with TikTokers for that reason. Mm -hmm. And what I've learned is, again, the more you engage, the more people know who you are. That's, I mean, it sounds like a really simple thing, but that's, I, I'm amazed at how many writers don't do it. I, you know, I... I can't, like I said, I came to Twitter on a dare. I, st I stayed, though, because I really like the community there, at least the writing community. Um, and I don't know if I've made a, a lot of sales off of Twitter, but I still find it very beneficial because I've definitely grown as an author and just gotten a lot of help uh, with things I'm in a... <laughs> This year, three anthologies I've worked in will be published because the collaboration is great on Twitter. Yeah. Um, 
But it's got yeah. help, right? Yeah. But what I have noticed is at first I was really um, preoccupied with making sure that I followed everyone who followed me to be polite. And then at some point, I just had to stop doing that because some people, all they do is retweet somebody's stuff or they just do the same, you know, image and link to Amazon on a schedule. They're not even really there. But if somebody replies to a tweet I do or I see something interesting, I will go follow that person. I don't care if they're brand new. I don't care if they have one follower or a million followers. I will follow that person. Uh, because like you said, it's about the engagement. Is this person really here to talk to people or is this person just using this as a broadcast channel? Yes. And, 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 it, and it's okay to use it as a broadcast channel too. I mean, that's that, I mean, let's be honest, we're all trying to do something, but same token, it can't just be a broadcast channel. I just, it, I, yeah. I mean, I, I pimp my stuff. <laughs> you know, I'm sorry. Like you said, I'm I got to make a Um, Like somebody was like, do you guys feel it's right to retweet your own tweet? I'm like, yeah, heck yeah. Why shouldn't I? <laughs> Why? Uh, but uh, it's not like I'm making a judgment call about how great it is. I'm saving myself a new tweet. But... Uh, I, it, it, you have to, you, it can't be disproportionate. You have to engage somewhat. And if you're only there to put out your links to your books and you're not doing anything else, that's boring. There's a reason why people are not going to engage with that. There's a reason why people aren't going to click on those links. They don't have a reason to care. Hey, everybody, buy my book. Next day. Hey, everybody, buy my book. Hey, everybody. Buy my book. Yeah, no, yeah. It, 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 no, absolutely. And, and in fact, but that's the world today. Like it, it, it's it's one of those it's one of those things where um, authors have to be can't be afraid to show their personalities anymore. Yeah, I mean, it's a little bit. I'll see the other thing too. Here's the little final thing that helps for. We, we we've talked about everything from start like you being homeless and kicking ass and surviving, and now in, in a place you don't quite like, but you you'll figure your way out of it somehow, some way. You'll probably. Just, <laughs> Uh, you know, but but also from the like video games, the fact is you engagement has also taught you how to deal with public relations better too. Yeah, I mean, sometimes I'll just say I I lack a filter. Um, <laughs> That's why I like you. <laughs> my uh, my mom used to say it was my Gaelic, um, but uh, I lack a filter. I just. I just blurt things out, uh, but uh, but even I am like, okay, you know, I don't know anything about this topic, so I'm just not gonna not gonna butt my head in and try to be, you know, try to sound smart for the sake of sounding smart. I think more people should maybe <laughs> take note of that on Twitter. But uh, yeah, no, I I enjoy and and i know that there's the whole no politics and no religion thing but i like talking about that stuff i was the president of my debate team in high school i enjoy things that are controversial <laughs> laid on me um as long as you're not a dick about it let's go right, and that's cool a lot of people can do it without being a dick though that's kind of like a lot of people avoid it right so my rule of thumb is I, i'll tell you straight up politically i'm an atheist and uh you know i believe in god that's just the way it is, and we can go and we can go back and forth. We can go back and forth on that one. That's cool, but um, but I, I've I've learned to have no faith in politics because everything I because there's no transparency or integrity in there. So if you have that, that I don't know what the what to believe. So. Yeah, for politics, it's very lower your expectations for me. <laughs> like yeah, yeah, don't yeah. don't get attached to anybody. I think a lot of people tend to turn these politicians to celebrities but in the end this is somebody who has made some trades to gain power and that is not going to be a person that's a hundred percent altruistic I, I, i've interviewed politicians one, one of the things i've learned is they are still people however right however this is the thing a lot of people have to understand about a politician they have to buy into what they what they're doing they have to it's 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 a totally human mm -hmm. thing um 
So you're not going to sell, be able to convince someone of an ideal unless you've bought into it yourself. That's just the way it is. So there is, so when I interview a politician, I always keep that in mind when I'm listening to them. Cause mm-hmm. it's like, so you've bought in, let's see what your Kool-Aid is. Oh, like. I am sure that they all believe what they say for the most part. I no, think that sometimes, no, but, no, see, no, no. See, see, it's called cognitive dissonance. This is, yeah. the thing. this is where this comes into play because um, this, the, the, the reality is, again, on a personal level, they all know there's flaws to what they're doing. Right. But, on, but on a public level, that doesn't help them sell an idea. So you, it, it's a, so when you deal, so when you're dealing with a politician, what I have found is if they're talking about what their cost, their ideals, you're going to, you're going to, that's when you, that's when you will smell something funny. If you want to talk to them though about an agreement for chocolate cupcakes, you will be so very surprised at some of the answers you will get. They are, they are very human. It's just, you got to real, you got to recognize that they do have an agenda and that they've bought into what they believe in. But once you understand that, you can still have a great, hey, cupcakes are awesome. Right, 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 right. Cupcakes are. I awesome. agree with that. Yeah. As controversial as it sounds, I think that cupcakes are delicious, yeah. and I'm pro cupcake. <laughs> I think mean, most people are. Right, but that's but, but again, but again, that's that's but that's yeah the thing, right? You gotta recognize that. And it's true with anybody, by the way. It's anybody with any power or any success. You have to. Um, <laughs> this is the same. <laughs> Okay. But, but 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 anyone with success, there's always a little a degree of gardenness to them, and this is where mm-hmm. it comes from. It's not. It doesn't actually come from a malicious place, but it's there, and you have to understand the nature. It's the nature of the beast. As I've gotten older, I I I'm a, again I, I try to understand the nature of the beast. It's a little. It's not so I'm necessarily empathetic towards it, so I know how to deal with it. Right? How do I cut through your bullshit? What does that act? What is it? How do I do that? So I need to understand how it works a little bit. And then I can cut through your bullshit if I want to. Sometimes I don't because it's like, eh, it's not worth it. But sometimes, you know what? You're full of crap. Right? And that's just it, right? <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I, I have very strong opinions. <laughs> so I will just say this. I'm a, I'm a little bit... In the last few years, I have started to understand revolutionary France a little bit better. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and that, and that's still coming. That is that is oh, ne- yeah. that, that, that is inevitable. Um, I think I think what I th- again it's something we mentioned earlier: the cost of living is unavoidable. And I think here's the problem with us. North Americans. This is just this is my opinion. By and large, we're still rich compared to the rest of the world. By and large, and because of that, even as much as it's being pushed and funneled and held and hoarded, and all of those things are true, I still have hot water and toilet paper. That might seem like small things. They're not. Go without them. You will yep. recognize the difference yep. immediately. And compared to the rest of the world, still wealthy, still complacent. That's the way it is. It's going to come for for North America to truly hit rock bottom. Two things are going to have to happen: we're gonna turn off our televisions, and and which which will only happen when first we lose absolutely everything. Yeah, and that's coming unless we really think about stop we put a stand now but that's i i think by and large we believe for the most part just based on our our complacency that our government is good whether or not it's the actual truth or not it's irrelevant because like, I'm, I'm right because I, what are we yeah. doing about it? like when it comes right down to it what are we doing about it and when and when and when when you realize when you look at it from that perspective it's like I can say for the sake of I can say with absolute one hundred percent certainty, my government has zero integrity, zero transparency. It is a dangerous, dangerous monster. What what am I doing about it? 
I'm still comfortable, right? Yeah. It's the bread and circuses, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, it goes yeah. back pretty far. Yes, yes. <laughs> So we've gone from we've gone from like like you know me being a badass fantasy fighter with a sense of humor to the morbidity of politics and like video games. Mm -hmm. I but this has not been an interview I expected at all. I yeah I um I tend to take meandering paths. <laughs> I'm used to it, but, uh, but this, yeah. you are an inter like I'm saying, like, you are an interestingly nuanced individual. Like your 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 level of um, complexity is very 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 endearing. Thank um, you. I'll yeah. tell my therapist. <laughs> uh, no, thank you. I appreciate the compliment. <laughs> no, it's but I mean I I, I love your depth and your detail. I I'm actually really curious with you with your fantasy series like. Like just getting the sense of you're opinionated, you're strong-willed, you're driven, you, you you're a badass, you really really are, and 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 I said that a lot, but a lot of people I interview, but it's the truth. You guys have all all go out and do amazing things all the time, and you're no different. And I just think that um, how do I put this? Um, I, I'm very curious with what that what that makes your books look like. Yeah, um, this is a book that I wanted to write since I was 13. Well, the first book is essentially the story that I wanted to write since I was 13. And so there's a little bit of that immature element to it because it's going back to the feelings that I had when I was, you know, a teenager. But as you get through the trilogy, it matures, not just because my writing got better, but because the story progressed from here, from this point, not from teenage Audrey. Sorry, that's my real name, guys. <laughs> um, but uh, so it does have that kind of feeling in the beginning. It's about a princess. I mean, come on. But it is what I like to call a feminist fantasy trilogy because I love fantasy. I love reading fantasy. It is my favorite, favorite genre. I like sci-fi too. I like contemporary, like Amy Tan is one of my favorite authors. But fantasy read. is where my heart is. I haven't, um, read, I haven't read her yet. I have not had her. So no, no, there's just so many. This is like, like, for, for, like, I'm just telling you who I'm re like reading right now. I'm reading, um, I'm reading my ne my current book is a Japanese light novel, which is mm -hmm. cool. But my next book's gonna be Alana Andrews, right? I'm a big fan of, of her. Uh, Kate Daniels world is always fun to read. Um, I'll come back, Jake. Um, uh, so they, like, I'm reading that. I'm reading Fonda Lee. Then I'm reading. Uh, I have. Uh, I'm reading. Let's see who's after that. Uh, Kat, Kat Hudson, I'm reading Charles Delend. I'm reading, I'm reading like um, uh, Victoria a Aviard. I'm reading like Susanna Clark. Like I, I got a preloaded list of people I'm reading right now. <laughs> yeah, it's a, I, I get a little bit like uh, television shows. I like to have multiple books going on. I call it my, my I call myself Polly Bookerus because I need to have different books for different moods. But uh, the one thing I kind of saw in a lot of the fantasy books that I love is that women are often written in the same way, even if they're the protagonist, even if they're the focus of the story. They are either in a supporting role and not the protagonist, not the main character, or they forgo everything about them that is traditionally feminine they like not just forgo it but like they hate it they hate that part of themselves and they push it away and they have to take on these male traditionally male characteristics of being violent and angry or stoic and all that stuff and it's because we've bought into this idea as a culture that if it is traditionally feminine, that it is inferior. And therefore, that's not what the main character of a story would do. So I wanted to write a story about a protagonist that was 
kind of soft. You know, she has feelings. She cries. <laughs> she cries a lot. I uh, one of her one of her big feelings as a person is, and she gets bragged on it by other characters. It's like she cries at the drop of a hat, and her but her whole thing is that her emotions are exactly her strength and that is what she helps her to survive that is what helps her to save others and ultimately change her world um and i also wanted to write a story where women weren't competing against each other because i see a lot of stories all over the genres where you can have one female protagonist who's not like the other girls and she just wants to hang out with the guys and I bought into that when I was young very very much bought into that oh I'm a gamer and I'm a tomboy like I spent my youth in the swamp you know um but uh I've missed out on some genuine relationships because I didn't even try to be friends with women. And in this series, I is the main character, but there are a lot of strong women with different personalities, different strengths. Um, and they and because they work together, they get so much more done. I may have you babeling something of mine at the end of if you're going to do it. I actually, so do you know historically who the Night Witches are? Yeah, the uh, the Russian women, yeah. So I came up with a female version of Parker, and she represents the Night Witches, and the Night Witches are fighting an evil version of the Knights of the Round. I somehow feel you'd enjoy that. Oh, that sounds interesting, yeah. Yes. There's also some dragon slaying in there, too. But I'm just, I, but, yeah, so, but, yeah, no, because... The organization she is with is literally like some of the most badass. I took every badass woman I've interviewed on this podcast, and I probably put a little bit of them in some of the characters. I literally, I, I, I because it, I, I, I've been so one of the things this podcast has pretty much destroyed with me. I'm not saying I don't have like these chivalrous things built into me because I'm wired a certain way. Because I, I, I still got some, but I, I, I am honestly constantly amazed at just how capable a lot of the women I interviewed on this show really are. And it's like, you make me feel inadequate in like the best ways. <laughs> and, 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 be getting, and, and that might sound like, like, like I'm, I'm, I'm being a little facetious, but it like interviewed a 19 year old pop star. Jag is a video game columnist, writer, badass streamer in her own right. Doris is an artist, poet, like just a streamer, you know, kicking ass. And these are just, and I've interviewed them. I interviewed you, and it's like, wow, like women. Uh, and this sounds like a really dumb thing to say, but it's like, like I know a lot of amazing women. And honestly, like the best way to actually put them in a situation where you can get them together is honestly. The only some, the only time I really see women compete against each other is usually when there's like a there's only one job and only one woman's going to fulfill it. That those are the yes. only those are the situations where I see it. By and large, like very live and let live. I I, I just I just think I just I just think like like our culture as as it as, again there's a lot we can work on in our culture, but I I, I just I I think. I think one of the things I, I, I've I had to kind of like open my eyes to, it's like, there are just a lot of badass women out there. They, they really are. I really, I have to agree with you. And and it's often the people you don't even realize. I, I have a lot of friends uh, that I haven't seen in a while because yay, COVID, but um, that are like stay at home moms. And you would think if you just were walking past them in Walmart, there's just nothing there. But like my friend Amanda, her father died when she was in high school and she was like a straight A student. She had to drop out of high school and raise her little sister and, and, and get a job and you know, all this stuff. 
and now she's gone through all the struggle and she's finally able to be comfortable in her life and this woman who didn't even graduate from high school okay is one of the smartest most insightful people i've ever met in my life i just I could listen to her for hours. She can tell me all this research she does. She goes to classes. She just signs up for random classes to learn about just all sorts of stuff. Uh, and you just you just never know. Um, but I, like you said, you meet all these people and they just wind up on your work because right. they're now they're inside your head. <laughs> My brother. Um, was really big inspiration for me in my books. Uh, he has all the positive, non-romantic relationships that my character, my main character has. Uh, because to me, he was always very strong and very reliable, but always in touch with his emotions. And I like the way I wanted to Oh my gosh, sorry. I Bluetooth just picked up on something else. I <laughs> the way I read men in books is kind of the way I read women in books too, if they're the protagonists. They're not allowed to have feelings and they're not allowed to be sad and their goals have to be external. And that's just not the way people are. People are not like that all the time. I mean, some people are sure. <laughs> but the majority of people I've known, the majority of guys I've known, they have emotions. They get sad. They get depressed. Yeah. Well, no, it's so it, it, like for guys, the biggest thing, like, like I'm in, relatively speaking, I am in touch with my emotions. I will cry at shit. I will be. I will laugh at shit. I will be angry at shit. I will. I have learned the art of letting myself feel everything I feel. I've also learned the art of when it's time to let it go, let it go. I, 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 I've, I've looked inside my internal shadow and I've kind of made peace with it. And that's the thing, right? right? But a lot of people do not know how to do that. And one of the reasons why I think you get that in fiction in particular is because, um, again, a lot of people don't necessarily, is, is there a reason I, I, I cry when I watch an episode of, 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 of High Man of the series? Yes, because I know what emotions it touches with me, right? Right? I, 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 I can, like, I'm older, I, I, can, I can get wrecked at, like, the silliest shit now. Like, I, I can totally do it, but I own it. I don't, I don't try to hide it because it's like, why, why I try to hide it? I'm willing to ask for help. I'm willing to, I'm willing to go forth and do things, right? Just because um, I recognize that it does me no good to be this, like, this shell. But again, when we're younger, we're taught, hey, we can follow this crap up. When we're older, we realize, man, we were both can we were idiots. <laughs> no. Allow me to oh gosh, I that movie, um, Inside Out, it's like more adults need to see that movie <laughs> than children. I I remember watching that movie and when sadness had to explain that sometimes you just need to feel sad. That was the most freeing uh, cinematic experience I think I've ever had. Because it was like, you know what? Yes, sometimes I just need to be sad and just let myself be sad and have a good cry about it. Because if I do that, then you know what happens? Then I'm not sad anymore. What? You feel better. It's out. Yeah. It's out. Yeah. Right? I just let it happen mm -hmm. instead of trying to bottle it down and keeping it around forever. That's right. I, I don't want to keep it. Fuck that crap. Fuck that noise. I'm too old for that shit. All right, right. I'm too old. Here's what I want to keep. I want to keep the stuff that made me feel something profound. I want to keep the stuff that made me feel genuinely happy. I mean, we'll keep keeping some of the stuff that made me genuinely sad if it made me who I am today. I remember the feelings I had when I was going through my hardest times in my life because it shapes my motivations for where I'm going. Now, the trauma, 
from the trauma, maybe I, still, I can let some of that go. That's probably for the best that some of that go. But I mean, the, again, we talked about this earlier: home trauma, poverty trauma. Like we, we both, we both been there. Yeah. But at the same token, at the same, at, at the same token, you, you're, you're like, right? We, we, we recognize something. We recognize some stuff too. It's like there's the profound stuff, and there's the minutia. And, the, and 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 I don't want no, I don't got time for the minutia. I I I'm almost forty. I got shit to do, and that's that's just that might sound like really 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 simplistic. I didn't get there overnight, guys. No, no, it's I, I turned forty in six days. Oh Jesus God, that hurts to say. No. Um, you look great. Right. You look great. I, I I didn't actually have you yet for you. I had I had you like in your like early thirties. So I mean oh, that makes you feel that makes you feel better a little bit. It's your, I'm still twelve. It's okay. I'm all I'm all right. I'm all right with that. Um, but uh, oh, I forgot where I was going with this. Jesus, <laughs> I had a train of thought. I'm turning forty. Yeah, I'm turning forty, and it's it, it was like a year and a half ago that I finally went. Oh shit! I'm almost forty, and I haven't gotten all this stuff done I've always wanted to do with my life. So I can either sit around waiting to die, or just do it. And uh, yeah, I'm I'm doing it. And it sometimes it sucks to be honest. When I wake up at four forty-five a.m. because I had a really inspiring dream. And I have to write it down. That kind of sucks. <laughs> when um, when I'm stressing, <laughs> when I'm stressing over editing or or something like that, that kind of sucks. But at the same token, the whole time in the back of your head, you're thinking to yourself, or I'm thinking to myself. I always say you a lot because I did so much marketing copyright in the past, and that's what you do but in the back of my head I always have the but if I do this this thing I really care about is gonna happen and it, it isn't even about the sales let's no. be honest I want to, to make sales if I could be a full-time author living off of my sales that would be a dream come true it'd be like winning the lottery but it's not about that it's about doing the thing it's about feeling those feelings. It's about creating and leaving something behind too. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. You know, I think this is a good point. I, I, I mean, don't get me wrong. I love talking to you, but I get the feeling me and you can go all night and wouldn't <laughs> even notice a point. Because I, 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 I get here's the feeling. Here's the feeling I get. Mm -hmm. This is the feeling I get with us next year whether i go to florida or we at a convention somewhere we are probably going to talk about random stupid shit that made us <laughs> yeah and, right and, and and then we're going to talk about really terrible jokes like but right and i i need to ask this before we wrap up terry pratchett yes or no oh yes then we are going to get along okay <laughs> <laughs> just fine but honestly i think you're well on your way i think the first trilogy was good for you because it got you got it out and now the next books are going to be even better and i have to say and i and i say this is all 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 humility you have been a hell of a pleasant surprise i really enjoyed this conversation i hope you have too oh yeah yeah we literally went everywhere. I've made you laugh. I made you think. I hope a little bit, and 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 you made me think about some things. And I wish you very luck with your series. So, I'm going to ask one last question. Then we get to the plugs. Okay. Did you ever watch Sailor Moon as a kid? Um. Yeah, a little bit. I didn't get to watch it as much until I was older, but I made up for it. <laughs> yes. Because. I will say this when you talk about the emotional stuff, emotional stuff. Although, although I'm not, I, I'm not going to say the English one so much. The Japanese one is the one I'm thinking about, right? Mm -hmm. It tied, it kind of like there was a little bit of that sense of um, 
yeah, it, it just struck me like that there's a little bit of that there because one of the cool things yeah. about this woman was her emotions is what made her super powerful. It wasn't her, it was it, it was the love of her friends, but it's also the love of life. Like she really cared about the world and the people in it. And she cared about living. And that's what made her like we're talking in Japanese. We're not talking about the big English version, because that's a terrible show with great music in it. <laughs> right? But um but um but uh it it's one of those things where um um no it's it's on, honestly and when I look at at the um because my sister's an amazing, is an amazing woman herself, and she talked about this. Getting in touch with her feminine side took a long time for her. Yeah. Right, and it's just the nature of the world we're in. I, and I really can't wait to read the book, kind of figure out what it's all about. But for those wondering, because I think we have an interview here. What do you think? Are we good? Are we awesome? Yeah, I think we're good. We're good and awesome. Okay, so, so why don't you tell people about your trilogy? In fact, so do you, when, is the third book coming out soon then? Since you just yeah. Finished? yeah, it's coming out on the 31st of this month. Um, I, it's called the Telever, <laughs> it's called the Televerin Trilogy. Uh, the first book is Struggling with the Current. Uh, it's about a princess who, she comes from a small country. It gets invaded for an ancient relic and she loses everything. And she's on the lamb, and she has to figure out who she is, which is hard for her because her whole life she's been told who she is. So she's never, this is unprecedented, the word of 2020 for her. <laughs> and she never, <laughs> she never saw it coming. So it, it's about that, and it's about becoming more powerful by being who you are. I, I actually really dig that premise. I really, really do. I really, really do. While we were talking, I literally got the cover to Alice One. I got to see the first cover to Alice One. And everybody's like, ah, it's sexy. It's that amazing. moment is the best. I love it when I get to see the cover. <laughs> oh, I, 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 uh, Kenzie's amazing. She really, really is. I, I really, like, I really dug it. I, I, I got, I got to get more writing work now because it's like I can pay her for the next phase of the, of the project because, I don't really want to go back to my day job. I, I, I kind of made that decision. I've already have made that decision, but you know, to do that, I, I gotta get more work. So that's what I'm going to do. But for everyone trying to find you, so your trilogy sounds amazing and wonderful and awesome. So what's the first book called? How can people find it? And how can people find you? Well, the first book is Struggling with the Current. Uh, it's, it's everywhere. It's wide. Um, if you're looking for links, my website is really easy. It's arkhorton.com. So it's my name, .com. And there are links to it. Yeah. Uh, uh, there are links to basically everywhere that you can buy my books. Um, there's also a tab of other work I've been involved with, the anthologies. Um, I, we've already published two. One is Tales from the Year Between Volume 2, which is a space opera anthology. And the one that just came out is Heads and Tales Anthology, which is where we retell classic tales from different points of view. And now I'm working on Pirates of the Multiverse, which is really fun. Oh, well, um, it was I so much I was fun. That, actually. that sounds really, really cool. <laughs> yeah, we were having way too much fun in that anthology. Um, like as a group, we're just, uh, we're up to hijinks. But uh, yeah, those those are available um, on my website as well. And I also do a fair amount of blogging. I haven't done so much recently because I've been wrapping up this trilogy. But I like to blog a lot about my research because I research mythology a lot. Ooh. So, so we got to do another conversation in like a few months down the road so we can talk mythology because I've been playing with Greek mythology a lot. And I think, I, I think we'd have a lot of fun just doing like mastering how I, I decided to play with Greek mythology and see what you think about it. I think we'd have a blast with that and see how you played with it as your stuff and we can, we can just do that conversation. Sounds but, great. All right, we'll do that. So, and so our Horton is like, do you have like any like permanent social media links you want to mention before I wrap this bad boy up? 
Um, well, they've already <laughs> kind of matched them. Thank you guys so much for checking me out. Uh, I like to keep things really easy to find because, again, background in marketing. Uh, I am on Twitter. I am R. Corton. On Facebook, facebook.com slash R. Corton. Uh, and on TikTok, I am R. Corton. And, yes, I know, I'm almost 40 and I'm on TikTok. I was, again, dared to go. <laughs> I will do pretty much anything on a dare. It's not great for me, but TikTok and Twitter have been positive oh, uh, man, consequences. Oh, I, I, I mean, you, yeah. Wait, who's the adult? Me or you? <laughs> Why do I get the feeling it's me? Oh, God. <laughs> All right. Anyways, um, <laughs> the, 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 uh, you know, I, I've noticed. I've noticed the wonderful thing about this podcast, Jack and Lynn, Before I wrap up, it's amazing how similar we all really are actually an incredible thing and i think we don't look at that enough on that note ladies and gentlemen that will do it for this episode of just joshing thanks for watching thanks for listening um if you want to subscribe to the podcast i'm on twitch.tv slash just joshing podcast my youtube channel is joshua pentolaresco you can hit the like and subscribe button there if you want to my book alice zero is now made for the elgin I literally just got the cover for book one. You might see it in the next few days. No promises, but we will. And thanks, Jag, and you have a great night as well. Stay inspired. Keep shining in the dark. See you guys Wednesday with Rebecca Raymond.